Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh from KFI AM 640 and iHeartRadio station. You can always find me on the iHeartRadio app pretty much anywhere. Uh, so, can we talk about your ball size? Oh, really? Scrotum, testes, let's use medically, anatomically correct language, okay? So, one of the things that's really interesting about many species is that the size of one scrotum is sometimes correlated with their sexual behavior. So understand it this way. First of all, we are one of five great apes, the five big primates left on the planet. Can you name the other four? Come on, everyone gets gorilla. They always get chimpanzee, orangutan, and bonobo monkeys, okay? So these are the ones who are closest to us. And when anthropologists study these kinds of species and look to find out how much promiscuity or monogamy exists in their sexual system, they look at the correlation between scrotum size and body weight. So at one end of the scale, you've got chimpanzees. Chimpanzees tend to have huge big gonads, relatively small body size, and tend to be very, very promiscuous. At the other end of the scale, you've got orangutans, tiny little chestnuts, big hulking bodies. They tend to be very monogamous and very paternalistic. So where do humans fall in on the scale? Well, somewhere in the middle. Actually, we have it all. Right? We have the widest range of sexual behavior of any primate species. And in fact, there are many different mating strategies that male use, males use. You know, some like to spread their seeds, some like to focus on one woman and a quantifiable amount of offspring and get those offspring up and out and through college and ready to procreate themselves. They're just different strategies. In another video, I'll tell you about female mating strategies. We've got some tricks of our own. Uh, so the question is, can you tell if a guy is going to be a cheater just by knowing the size of his scrotum relative to body size? Well, there's some early research to show that, yeah, there can be a correlation. So the bigger the balls, the more the cheater. I mean, think of the language we use all the time. Oh, he's so ballsy. Yeah, he's got big balls, right? What are we thinking when we say that? We're talking about aggression. We're talking about high levels of testosterone. We're talking about being fearless, all the things you need to be a cheater. Now, we are not just animals. We are intellectual animals and we have consciousness and biology is certainly not destiny. So there's also a whole bunch of research out there to show what cultural things keep men from cheating, even those with big giant scrotum. Uh, one thing is intelligence. Did you know that the higher one's intelligence, that is more correlated with monogamy because they're smart enough to do a cost-benefit analysis of cheating. Well, wait, if I cheat, that divorce will cost me a lot of money. My kids may not fare as well with a single parent. I'm going to tend to focus here, right? The other thing is religion. Almost every religion out there preaches family, right? So it's moral teaching. Our mind really can um, change our human behavior, even when there's a biological impulse to do otherwise. Because all psychology is, is biology meeting the environment. So the environment are all our relationships and our greater culture and our media messages and our biology is what we're predestined for. Think of it this way. You could be born with a gene for heart disease and uh, maintain a lifestyle that includes a specific diet and exercise to never have a heart attack just like a guy could be born with really large testes and not be a cheater. So there you go. That's why ball size matters. I'm Dr. Wendy Walsh.